let's kick off our club roundup with the reigning champions. Winning the 2020 Premier Division by six points and picking up the title for the 24th time, making them by far the most successful club in the country. They've also got a huge 28 Faroe Island Cups to their name, so let's have a closer look at them. This is Faroe Ball and this is HB. Their full name is Hanna Boltfeller. You'll see this word Boltfeller a lot as you go through the teams. It is basically the Faroese equivalent of FC. Bolt means ball, fella means club. Ball club. Han is the Faroese word for harbour, so HB quite literally means the harbour's football club. They play in red and black stripes and were formed in October 1904, making them the third oldest team in the Faroe Islands. HB are based in the capital city, Torsan, from where they take their name. Torsan in Faroese means Thor's Harbour. They play at the 5,000 capacity Gundadalor Stadium, which they share with their city rivals, B36. You'll find quite a few teams in the league that come from the capital region and the surrounding area, and considering the city houses two-fifths of the country's population, it's no surprise that that's where the most football is played. Gundadalor is actually home to three clubs, as it has an upper pitch and a lower pitch, but you'll find out more about those clubs later on. HB and B36 each have their own stand decked out in their colours, but home fans against anyone else can sit in either stand. The ground sits next door to Torsvala, the national stadium, where the Faroese national team play and where HB played some games in 2020 while their home ground was getting re-turfed. Although actually, like all Faroese grounds, it's an artificial pitch, so I'm not sure if re-turfed is the right word. I had the delight of watching an HB game back in 2017 and got to experience a match day at Gundadalor. It was about £8 to get in, the ticket seller had a huge Liverpool FC tattoo, and the opposition NSOI fans had bought a massive drum with them and made one hell of a racket in the away end. At half time, before the players even get a chance to come off the pitch, they open the pitch to the kids, who get to have a 15 minute free for all kickabout on the actual playing surface. And of course, HB won the match. We can pick any of HB's 24 league titles to be the finest hour, but we won't. Instead, let's look at their European ventures, because HB are the only team from the Faroe Islands to advance past the qualifying grounds of a European competition to the first round proper. In 1993, they made their European debut against RAF Jalgava from what is now Latvia in the Cup Winners' Cup. Back in the early 90s, the Cup Winners' Cup was the second most prestigious European Cup the equivalent of today's Europa League. HB actually lost the first leg, but the Latvian team had problems getting to the Faroe Islands for a return leg, ultimately never making it to town. HB were awarded a 3-0 win and played in the actual first round, unfortunately being knocked out 7-0 over two legs against Romanian side Universitatea Craiovia, or, or something like that. Fun fact, the winners of that 1993-94 Cup Winners' Cup was Arsenal, which was, as of 2021, their most recent European trophy. Seven HB players featured in the most recent national call-ups, including long-serving goalkeeper Titor Jessen, who will play his 10th season with HB in 2021. He's made 12 appearances for the national team, and he's undoubtedly the national number two behind former Manchester City goalkeeper Gunnar Nielsen, who actually started his career at HB. Certainly one to watch up front is Adrian Justinusson, who missed a large portion of the 2020 season injured, but at the age of just 22 and with 54 goals in the last three seasons, he's a driving force to the HB forward line, along with Danish striker Mikael Dahl. And if there's any fans of Hamilton Academical that are wondering what happened to your Congolese defender Dalphin Chiembi, he's here now. He's safe. HB have had a number of famous Faroese faces pass through their dressing room, including the current national team talisman, Johan Simon Edmondson, who now plays in the Bundesliga. He currently has the most caps from the current international squad, and he played at HB at the same time as overall record international cap holder, Frey Benjaminsson, who spent eight years with the club. I'll always try to flag up Faroese players who have played in Britain, and whole city veterans might remember Julian Johnson, who played one season with the Tigers in the old third division 
but left Hull after failing to settle in the town for whatever reason. I also have to give a quick mention to Hans Orlarg, who helped HB win six league titles and three cups, and was also a Faroese handball champion and won five national badminton titles. Probably one of the best Faroese players never to get an international cap. And finally, former goalkeeper Kai Leo Johansson, who spent 20 years at HB between 1984 and 2004, and then seven years as Prime Minister of the Faroe Islands between 2008 and 2015. Only four years passed between retiring from football and then leading the nation. It would be like voting in Prime Minister Leighton Baines in 2025. Oh, and do you remember that last video where I talked about the heroics of the bobble hat goalkeeper? Well, Johansson was the goalie on the bench for that match. The reason the Faroe Islands Cup is a competition at all is entirely down to HB and their ambitious overseas travels. In 1910, they were the first team to leave the Faroe Islands and play a foreign opponent, as they ventured across the North Sea to Norway. They also came to the British Isles to play in Shetland, but it was their 1954 trip to Iceland which would create history. They returned from their Nordic neighbours with a present, a cup, and gave it to the Faroese Sports Association so they could start a football cup tournament, and one year later, HB immediately won it back. One unknown to the season ahead is in the manager area. Their last manager, former Norwich City legend Jens Barthelasku, returned to Denmark after winning the double with HB. He's now at AC Orsons, who had sacked Jonas Dahl after a run of bad results, so HB went in search of a new manager and brought in Jonas Dahl. The new manager has a lot of success to build on, and it will be hard to top a double winning campaign, but they'll be tough to keep away from the top of the league. Klaxvik, NSOI and of course B36 will be looking at taking that top spot away from them, but I'm going to go for them to retain the league. So that's your comprehensive look at a team that bought the nation a cup competition, a wealth of international players and a prime minister. Although, remarkably, they're not the only team to produce a prime minister. You'll have to wait and find out who that is, but it definitely isn't our next video, last year's runners-up, NSOI Runewick. Tack for watching. Throw a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for NSOI.